Somebody actually tweeted in Snoop and wanted to know where the name Lion came from, Snoop Lion. And, and, and also, what does it mean to you to be Snoop Lion? Um, they just crowned me the Lion, you know, because it's associated with Rastafari, it's associated with reggae music, and they felt like the dog was no, li no longer needed, you know, for my journey that I was on. Mm -hmm. So it was given to me. It wasn't that I chose that name. Was, that in, name in the film, it was Bunny Whaler. Bunny Whaler called you Lion. I mean, that's what they all call me, you know what I'm saying? It's like... It's, it's a natural transformation. It's like from the dog to the lion. You understand me? It's not anything but a, a, a transformation and a growth of an artist and a person and a man. There might be that aura around it. Do you just ignore that and just be yourself? Or do you have to address issues of people being suspicious no, that this may not be a true transformation? I don't believe that you have to address it as long as your actions show that it's real. You know, people know me since day one. I've always been upfront and personal and I've always been me. I've never faked a funk. I've always gave it to them uncut and raw. So this is just another page to my book. So please enjoy. <laughs> you got a question? Well, when it, when it all happened for me was, um, <clears throat> The day that I accepted myself and said that I wanted to go to Jamaica and to do a, a record and to film it and to, and to document it. And my whole thing was I was always, you know, saying to myself that I was Bob Marley reincarnated. So I wanted to just figure out how could I get into the minds, bodies, and souls of the people of Jamaica and not just go and steal their culture and take their music and run off with it, but go be a part of what they're going through and understand the struggle because at the same time, people from different parts of the world go through the same things no matter where they're from. And what I found out and what you'll find out from watching this movie is that the Whalers were similar to 213, that we grew up the same way, struggling, trying to make music and trying to find a way. And once we made it, we gave back and we looked and found ways to, to help out other people and to inspire people. The intention was to go to Jamaica you know, be influenced by the culture and the people and um, try some new things. And then, you know, Snoopadelic Films being such an important initiative for Snoop right now with the long form content we're creating and partnering with an incredible company like Vice, um, we thought we would just capture some of that. But um, the actual spiritual element and the connection with Rastafari was something that just naturally happened out there. You can't plan for that, right? I mean, we didn't know who we were going to meet or what we were gonna be doing or that we would have the chance to go to the Nyabingi Rastafari Temple. Mm -hmm. So that was just um, Ja, higher power, you know, bringing all of us together to the right places in Jamaica to make that happen. Cool. And back to the other question, <clears throat> yeah, definitely I won't the people who listen to my music to go back and pay homage and get the understanding of reggae music and where it came from and what it was started on and what it was built on and know that I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not what reggae music is. I'm just a piece of it. I'm an extension of where it's going to go because I believe it was made as a seed to grow, to go across the whole world for people to enjoy it and love it and make it a part of their lives. And that's what I'm doing. It reached me all the way in Long Beach, California and I'm bringing it back around to the world again so people can love and respect reggae music because it feels good when you're listening to make it reggae music and when you're making reggae music. And so on another note, we're building a program called Mind Gardens where we're building and showing the people in Jamaica how to you know, plant fruits and vegetables and grow their own produce and they'll be able to reproduce and make money and sell it at the same time. So we coming back and giving back to these same communities that we went to what we've seen where there's a lot of struggle and people say, well, they're lazy. They're not lazy, they're just not given opportunity. So we're gonna give them an opportunity to get it and that's what we're doing. Right. Farrah from Fast Company Co-Create. Um, there was a comment made earlier about um, discovering uh, the historical reggae through this change for you. Um, but there's a point in the film where there's a, a, an acknowledgement of the fact that reggae culture is incredibly commercialized um, and it's almost become a bit of a cliche, you know, go to college, put on a patch kind of thing. How do you hope that, and you're also a very commercial star, how do you uh, hope this, this balance between commercialism and what you're really experiencing through this um, transition to Rasta will, will be kind of played out, I suppose? 
Well, what we're hoping on doing is getting um, some sort of television program with the Nyabingi Center and letting them teach you Rastafari the righteous way, the real way, from the people who know it and understand it so it won't be no gimmick. And that way you get the full understanding from the people who live it, who lived it, and who understand it. And to me, that's the thing that I would like to do is give it from the people who understand it as opposed to myself who's just learning it. I could never teach it. I could only learn along the way, and I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, and I don't mind making mistakes, but I'd rather be taught from the people who know about it more than I do. So we, we're looking forward to creating a television program that's going to give that understanding so it won't be so commercialized and so, you know, connected with trying to get money out of it or when you throw red, yellow, and green on, we're getting paid off of it. That's not what we in it for. We in it for the spirit. The whole project was about the music, reggae music getting the attention that it deserves because I'm tired of it not being classified as one of the great genres of music because many people have made lots of babies off of reggae music and made lots of, <laughs> you know, great things happen off of reggae music. So we need to, you know, treat reggae music like rock music, like rap music, like any other genre of music that's been here for over 50 years. They give me what I was missing. See, this project was about me bringing in the best producers and the, be and the best writers. It wasn't about me writing from my spirit or me, you know, telling you my story. It was about bringing in the best writers who could bring to life what I wanted to express, which was an album about love, peace, and struggle. I've never had an album that I could put out that represented love, peace, and struggle. I always had to, you know, maintain my Snoop Dogg aura or, you know, the things that came with the gang banging or the shit that I was so accustomed to as a kid. But as I become a man, I learned to get rid of my childish ways and to do things that feel good to me. And this reggae project feels good to me. You had a question? Hi, Snoop. Christine from uh, Reuters. Can you talk a little bit more about the name change? Can you compare the image of the lion to the dog? <laughs> and uh, why have you kept Snoop in your name? And secondly, uh, will you keep playing your old hits? Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm always going to continue to do my music, you know what I'm saying? And as far as the name thing, it wasn't me making the name change. It's the name that I was given. So, you know, when you're given something, you like to, you know, honor it and, you, you know, hold it up with pride. I'm still Snoop Dogg, this is me right now. I'm Snoop motherfucking dog till I die. But at the end of the day, when I'm making my reggae music, I'm in the light of Snoop Lion. So, you know, you have to respect both worlds because there's a softer, more gentler, peaceful side when he's the lion. But if you disrespect me or get out of pocket, you will get the motherfucking dog. <laughs> Yeah, hello, I'm Susanna with German National Public Radio. You mentioned earlier it was all about love. Um, however, there's been some criticism from Jamaica too um, by Sizzler, who said that um, you know there was an aspect of exploitation maybe of the Rasta culture. Um, what's your response to that and have you talked to Sizzler? I don't, I don't have no response to that because I come in love, so I can't, I can't answer you know, hate with love. But all I can do is say, my, my mission and my journey was, was genuine from my heart. The people that I connected with, we had a great time. We, we, we built a brotherhood and a fellowship. And, you know, the people that I didn't connect with, you know, it's like that sometimes. When you go to a community and you don't touch everybody's hands, you know, some people are going to feel left out. And they're going to feel like, you know, it, it, did, it wasn't real because it didn't come through me. But one thing about Rastafari, it's not about the people. It's about the spirit. So not one man or one person can say whether you right or you wrong. It's within the way you live, your way of life, your liberty. So I want to say peace and love to Sizzler, and hopefully he'll get a chance to meet me so we can sit down and chop it up man to man. Andy, you want to get in? Yeah. 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 Add, adding to that out. spirit, yeah. you know, in updating from that is that there's been a YouTube video recently where I think because of the spirit that Snoop Lion's been carrying, he actually expressed